Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Today, as my co-adventure guide, we have John Heinen. He is a professional trumpet player. We're going to talk about when the trumpets sound in heaven. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak coming to you from Waikiki Beach. I wish I could open up my window here and show you the beautiful blue surf outside my window. But more importantly, just below me, actually directly below me, 25 stories be below me, is the altar uh, just just to the side of us for St. Augustine's Catholic Church. So it's really a beautiful place to have a to have a home and to know that Jesus is right here with us. You know, I was thinking about, we have our guest today, John Heinen, who, who is a tr professional trumpet player. And I was thinking about the walls of Jericho, what a, what a gnarly thing that was. I've been to Jericho. It was, in, in ancient history, um, it's the first walled city that we know of. And that's the one God told them to attack first, right? That's the one God told them to go, to go after. Joshua, who was their new commander, uh, God said, I will show them today that I am with you. And they crossed the Jordan River at flood stage, went to the walls of Jericho, Remember, the generation before, before this generation wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because they doubted. Uh, they saw how great the promised land was, but even though God was able to free them from the Pharaoh and cross the Red Sea, they doubted that they could take the land because there were giants in the land. And, but uh, God established Joshua as their leader, and now this is his, their first chance to really see him in action. They've been fighting off the Amorites, the Amalekites, the Mosquito Bites, all that out there in the, the wilderness for 40 years. But now they were going to be on the offensive. And they cross the Jordan River. And where do they go? He takes them to Jericho. Are you like, are you serious? It would be like a high school uh, team that's out having their first scrimmage, scrimmage against uh, the New England Patriots or something. You know, they were, this is their first time to take a city to, to have any sort of siege. And so God said, I got a good idea for you guys. Why don't you guys just march around the city of Jericho one time a day for six days in a row? And then on the seventh day, he had them walk around seven times. But the key thing is the whole time, that whole week, they were told, don't speak. Don't say a single word. Because what did the people, what did their parents do? Their parents mum, you know, murmured and grumbled and complained and they had doubt. So he just said, don't even talk. Watch and see what I'll do. On the seventh time around, he had them sound the trumpet and, and, and scream and roar. And at the sound of God's voice, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. We need in this day trumpet players. We need in this day people that will shout the good news. This isn't a time to be silent. You know, Cardinal Sarah wrote the book about the time of silence, but his newest book says, it's not time to be silent anymore. We need to speak boldly the good news of Jesus Christ. We need to stand out boldly against the, the, the darkness. And I'll tell you what, God knows how to bring light. Remember uh, a couple battles later that Joshua was involved when the sun stood still in the sky for, for about a half a day so they could finish their battle. The sun's going to shine bright on us. We need to be bold, shout, and, 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 and let the trumpet of the Lord be heard. John Heinen, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, Bear. Excited, blessed to be here. Appreciate yeah. you having me on. Yeah, we love John. John actually helps us with, uh, he's with Fuzati. They actually help us with all of our social media. And uh, what a blessing to see excellence uh, at, at, at work in, in every, you know, taking our, our, our spiritual excellence and, and applying it to our, our regular work is, is just beautiful. And John has always been really, the reason why I have you on my show, John, is because I've gotten to know you. I, I know your own yeah. personal commitment to Jesus Christ, to the church, to your family. And, and one of the ways you can tell someone is excellent is, is, is just by their work ethic, their, their work ethic that they apply themselves and are good stewards to the kuleana that God's given them. So yeah, welcome to the show, John. Hey, excited to be here. You know, so you were bringing up the walls of Jericho and yeah. there's a there's like a modern uh, Jericho that here in Houston, we've been able to, we pray 
um, you know, for the end of, and obviously that's uh, not to jump this dark real quick, but Planned Parenthood, right? We have the largest Planned Parenthood facility here in Houston. And every year I've been blessed um, to, uh, we do a Jericho march around uh, the Planned Parenthood and uh, you, uh, hundreds of youth come out every year. Uh, we have a procession of, of the crucifix, you know, a huge crucifix, procession of Our Lady, um, Our Lady of Fatima, and uh, I hold my trumpet. And basically every time around, um, you know, I, uh, I, I, I blow a, um, you know, like a, a horn sound, you know. Or a, so a you go, fanfare. how long does it take to, to make one circuit around the, that building? It's Ooh, huge. good question. Think, so can't, it's, you see it's it, huge. Can't, can't you see it from the freeway? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, right so, off of yeah. 45. Yep, it's it's uh, heading south on 45. It's right on the right. It's, um, yeah, a little Satan's Palace. And uh, we, uh, oh, it takes a while, actually. I mean, I would say uh, I stand there for a good 10 to 15 minutes in between playing and then they just pray the rosary and then they do some worship music and then they pray the rosary and just, you know, every time around they pause when I play uh, a fanfare and then go back at the rosary procession. So it's, it's uh, real beautiful and it's a great thing to, to be involved in here. You know, it's spiritual warfare and you're calling on, yeah. we're calling on the angels to fight uh, that fight for us and with us, uh, but that's just, Amen. it's just really stark to drive by, ride that. We rode our motorcycles by there. We went to the Catholic yeah. Charismatic, yeah, we went uh, to the Catholic Charismatic yeah. Center in Houston with Father Mark Goring, and I don't know if people saw episode two or three, we marched down to where there were five brothels, uh, and, wow. we, and we, and that church does that every month, and we marched with them. So here are these big bikers, right, walking with these people, and we got down to these brothels, and we said the, a decade of the rosary in front of each of these five brothels, and uh, yeah. it wasn't. It was pretty gnarly. I know at one point one of the yeah. the, the main guys, one of the pimps, kind of showed up, and then he called in an enforcer, and uh, I was wow. concerned for the safety <laughs> uh, uh, of yeah. Father Mark's uh, uh, you know people. But I think they were kind of alarmed too because they saw these bikers. You know, people, bikers kind of have this bad reputation. But yeah. it was interesting because as we continued our walk, it ended. And the road that they're on, the cross street is row, R-O-E. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, But um, at, one, at one point, one woman kind of stuck her head out the door and waved and then was pulled back in. Um, yeah. But I know now that I think two or three of those brothels have shut down. So, wow, praise God. Yeah, yeah. so, we're, so the, 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 the prayer is the only way that's going to end. That's right. No, right. I completely agree. And that charismatic, you were right there. The charismatic Catholic center is exactly where we meet. Uh, and then everyone marches over. It's a good, I don't know, 25, 30 minute walk uh, to the Planned Parenthood center from there. And then uh, we start the procession. So yeah, you were in the heart of it right there. I admire all of those who, who, uh, who have a, a, a discipline of going and praying in front of of yeah. those abortion centers where, Amen. They're, where they're killing babies. And now they're killing babies as they exit the womb. I know. You know, I know. And, and, and it's, it's just so interesting how people will, you know, rationalize that and make excuses. But here's the thing, John, a lot of people have an opinion about, a lot of people say they're pro-life. Yeah. But they don't do anything. That doesn't mean you're pro-life. Right. That means you have an opinion. Right? Yeah. And you can talk right, about absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to do something about it and show up at the rallies and, and pray and do what you can and, and and it would be a travesty to ever vote for anyone that's pro-abortion. Yeah, people no, I, I'm on the same page, obviously, and and I I couldn't agree with you more. And I would say that uh, that you're yeah you're spot on. And actually, what you were saying at the very beginning of this um, this conversation here was we have to be bold. We have to step out in the light, and and it is we we are in an age that. Um, everyone is being bombarded in the media. Everyone is being bombarded on social media. Everyone has the ultimate opinion. I was reading a quote um, the other day that um, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth, said uh, about how we just we give uh, we have no troubles giving. Uh, infallibility to anybody on social media or anybody in the realm of any um, scientist. We, <laughs> right. Exactly. They're all experts without question. And um, yet we struggle with the authority of the church, you know? Oh and, my God. I've never, I've never thought of that, John. That's a power. Say that again. Yeah. It's so powerful. Yes. 
Yeah, I should find the quote, but basically, uh, you know, Benedict XVI, actually, when he was uh, Joseph Ratzinger, obviously, when he when he said this, but he just said that um, we have no trouble today uh, giving infallibility to, uh, you know, any scientist, any speaker with the mic. Um, but we struggle with the authority of the church. We struggle with the infallibility of the pope, which is a very, you know, small um, but important uh, distinction within the Catholic Church. And I mean, I've helped a number of people. The Holy Spirit's, you know, obviously used me to to help uh, bring people into the faith. And that authority button is truly, you know, what uh, it's like a house of cards, right? When somebody uh, accepts the authority of the church as uh, that which, um, you know, was given, you know, through the power of the magisterium, the authority to to form scripture to um you know to declare what was um the word of god when somebody accepts that everything else falls it's like you know i might not understand our lady but um hey if the church has told us about her you know i'm going to be open to the possibility of of, of these teachings that's so and powerful so, because J jesus it was a builder right technon he was a yeah. builder the only thing we know that he built for church is the church is for sure is yeah. the church he said i will yeah. build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it uh but the the great uh the great builder uh has has knows how to build his church and there need there needs to be an authority structure and i think so many people that's their stumbling block about coming to the church but it actually becomes the doorway because because they begin to see well this pastor said this and this radio show said that and and it's my opinion that it's this and this my friend's opinion is that is that and then it gets down to well like, who is the arbiter of what uh what scripture means or what the what the doctrine and moral teaching is and they realize they need a church teaching authority. We're talking with John Heinen. Uh, yeah. He's a professional trumpet player, uh, father, and we're going to come back to him talk a little bit more about his personal faith journey. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite uh, the women to become involved in our ministry. Actually, when I travel, wherever we, Cindy and I go, the women come up and are so thrilled about our ministry. Like, thank you. There's someone who can talk to our men in their language, you know, in a real gritty uh, real truthful way and uh, we're we're just so thrilled so we have a you know of course the men love our ministry but it's the women that are just so i don't know at a very visceral level saying we need this ministry and we want to invite you women you don't have to be on the sidelines you can come and be part of our ministry you can go to our website deepadventure.com if you subscribe to our newsletter you get a free audio book deep adventure the way of heroic virtue and there's others way, other ways that you can uh, participate with us, too. Get our newsletter, share it with your brothers, share it with your, your husband, your sons. Uh, and also, you can uh, encourage them to join Bear's Man Cave. It's the coolest thing. It's, it's, a, it's a private Facebook group, so you can't join by going to Facebook. But when you can sponsor one of your men into the, into the, to the Man Cave, and there you're going to find a bunch of misfit, 
men who are all kind of struggling with the same thing on a path to becoming a warrior for God and on a path for personal holiness. And I think of it us as the cave of Adullam, you know, where, da- where King David's, you know, had to hide out from from King Saul. And it says all the misfits and the people who owed money and and uh, people that were on the run kind of gathered to him. And he made that scraggly bunch. The Holy Spirit made them into a mighty warrior, a band of warriors. So together, uh, all this band of misfits, where we are establishing each other in the faith, inspiring, encouraging. If you think you're perfect, don't join because we're only it's just the knuckle draggers uh, that are allowed to join. But women, we want your participation in our ministry. Uh, you you, uh, you you are our biggest fans, but we want you to know you can be a part of it by getting the newsletter, getting the men into the man cave, and becoming a bigger part of what we do. We're talking with John Heinen. John is actually uh, with a company called Fuzati. Uh, he does all of our social media for us. And the, But the reason I have him on my show is because over the time that I've gotten to know him, I've actually seen him go some, through some personal, real, real challenges, and mm-hmm. have seen that he is a man of faith. And uh so we're going to dig a little bit deeper. Can we backtrack now? We know you're a professional trumpet player. You've played at the yeah. Olympics. You've traveled around the world uh, uh, playing the trumpet, but you also are a trumpet for the Lord. Uh, talk to us about your uh, your path, uh, you know, your spiritual pedagogy, your journey. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to. And so uh, my spiritual faith has grown, but, I mean, I was always cradle Catholic. So I always, grew up, always cradle uh, Catholic. Uh, sorry, Still? I was I was a heathen. You're getting kind of big. You're getting, I, you're getting too big I, to be in a cradle, John. <laughs> that's that's right. And I was also a pagan when I was born until I got baptized. Uh, you know, <laughs> Horrible so, seven um, days. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyway, so yeah, since I've been baptized a Catholic, and my parents did a great job, you know, bringing me to uh, to church school and in Sunday mass on Sundays, and so I was very blessed with that. But I really didn't start jumping into my faith until college, right? I think that's very common for a lot of people. When I was in college, it was to win arguments, right? And so I got into apologetics because I just wanted to beat people. That people were questioning me. I went to TCU, right? Um, oh, I know it's not Baylor. It's, be- it's better better than Baylor. So no, Wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Let's just stop the cut broadcast right there. Hey, Josh, <laughs> you know, we, we should just end it right here because uh, TCU – <laughs> and, and Baylor, arch enemies, huh? Yeah, that's right, the rivalry. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> 100, 100 and some years, right? Um, well, well, we're, well, this is being from, air. Well, well, this is being air. John, football season will be on, hopefully. Awesome. Well, yeah, this is being young. aired. We're probably <laughs> getting ready for the big game, but we've had some really big shootouts, haven't we, in the last decade between yes. TCU and Baylor? Absolutely, so, joining the Big Twelve and uh, and fighting it out. Uh, well, on that level, but we've for been, sure. We've been, yeah, uh, what, we we've been playing TCU though forever before back in the Southwest Conference days. So there's yeah, absolutely, a huge... and at, back in back in the early 1900s when when you guys burned down our administration building in Waco and, and kicked us out of Waco, and we had no. to uh, we had to go to uh, to Fort Worth. That's just a vicious rumor. <laughs> it's so funny though cuz TCU they tell you that you, I've you never literally heard that. go I've never heard that in my life. <laughs> so we go we go on the walk at TCU and uh and they show you you know TCU founded in the 1800s you know late 1800s but it was founded in Waco and uh you know Ann Rand and and all of that and and they're like yeah we were in Waco and TCU was in Waco and then What do you mean Ann Rand our, and all of that what's that about? Uh, sorry, just uh, who had the founders and in, in the whole history? Oh, Anne it was Rand was one Texas of the founders. Of, Anne Rand was one yeah. of the founders. Oh my gosh! Um, okay, and and basically they yeah they connect you with all of that the whole history and it's it's all very you know um, confusing and and then you know they of course tell you that we're more Texas than we are Christian whatever that means. Well, can and, we can we say <laughs> this though to each other? Do we both hate Texas more than we hate each other? University of Texas. Yeah, absolutely. And, <laughs> and we can find our common ground, you know, uh, at home in the church. I was, um, I was, at, I was actually on a, uh, at a, at a, uh, EW10 event in, uh, 
Alabama, right? All the Catholic radio stations were there. Yeah. And I was talking to this one guy, and he's with he's a Texas Aggie, and I, I hate the Aggies. Just hate the Aggies. I don't even know why they exist. Horrible people, you know. Just And so he and I are having this kind of fun little time together, and how we hate each other. And then we get on the elevator, and there's a dude there wearing a University of Texas shirt. Sure. And suddenly, we, the Aggie and I were best friends going after him. But I'll tell you, yeah. the thing is, the thing is, the thing about the Aggies is they, you know, we might have burned down your administration building. But what could be worse, when I, when I was going to college, the Aggies uh, kidnapped Bevo, their big longhorn. Yeah. And they invited the, they invited the trustees and the, the, the administration to a big barbecue, and they fed mm. them Bevo. They fed them their wow. mascot. Oh, <laughs> that was my bad goodness. Bongos. I hadn't heard that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's wow. the, that, for those of you who are big SEC fans, you haven't seen anything until you come to the Southwest Conference in the Big 12. Okay. So yeah. anyway, we diverge. We, we've, we've made yeah, we up. Did. We can We have so a long, my, common ground in the faith. Okay. That's right. And, and by the way, in the faith, right? Because TCU was not uh, friendly to Catholics. Um, There's a good Catholic community center for sure, but I was being attacked for my faith right and left. And um, in my pride, I definitely wasn't looking to convert people. I was just looking to win arguments. And so I fell in love with apologetics. And But you know, that's uh, really good, started. John. That's good, though. Yeah. I mean, it's like the early heresies attacked the early church, and we had to strengthen yeah. our, our understanding of our faith. So it, it, that's right. it, it drove you it opened, deeper. It sure did, and without a doubt. And I, uh, I mean, f- flash forward, and I've got... Uh, um, daily rosary, you know, I mean, uh, uh, consecrated to Our Lady, you know, through oh, yeah, uh, to show your ring. I was seeing your ring. Uh, yeah, I'll put it up to the um, the camera here. So, yeah, so it's a miraculous medal, but then I've got uh, totus tuus, you know, total yours on this yes. side with the JP2 Marian cross. And then on this side, I've got the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Praise and God. I had it made in such a way that they, uh, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see that, yeah, I can see the backside of the Miraculous Medal um, on my ring as oh, well. So you so had that, that made, you had made the head that custom made, that's cool. I did, I had that custom made. So yeah, I had a I had a Miraculous Medal <laughs> custom made. So from not really understanding my faith, going to Mass on Sundays to, out of obligation to uh, being challenged in college. And so then I did. I went to. Well, what's, I went what, to Yale. What is, how, how did you go deeper into your apologetics? What what did, for those who are listening? Maybe they're on college campus right now. Uh, what yeah. books did you read, or how did you go deeper in, into that arena? Yeah. So Jim Burnham's his uh, beginning apologetics. I bought all of those, mm. and then I bought um, uh, Carl Keating's. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, it's fundamentalism, you know, um, and it's, it's, it's his argument against fundamentalism. Then I got into Peter Kraft. Um, oh, uh, man. oh, dude, you know, I was, and, last night, last night I had my, you know, I introduced my son, Jeremiah, to Dr. Peter Kraft. You're watching him on YouTube. Wow. Yeah, I oh, love him. God. Oh, I love him. You know, just, I the fact too. That, just the fact that he's a surfer, right, is enough. That's right. And, and a walking <laughs> saint, honestly. I mean, he really is. And oh, I tell you uh, last so, night, I listened to his, 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 uh, his Thomas Aquinas, uh, ma- uh series that he has on audible i listen yeah. to that to go to sleep but i'm in the middle of my dreams going oh this is so awesome. cool <laughs> yeah. awesome. I have my headset on i was listening to it <laughs> i love it we both had our adventure for sure and so yeah so i did i got i got into that i was reading it um uh i was uh getting into arguments and god blessed me with a um a tor franciscan tor and uh, his name was what, what is it Ted. what is that you got to explain for a our third non- yeah it's, Absolutely. Thank you. So TOR is a, a third order regular, um, but it is a, uh, a branch within the Franciscans. And uh, so there's the uh, they, they're the ones that actually uh, run Franciscan University in Steubenville and uh, St. Francis University. And I think Loretto, Pennsylvania. But is, is third order like my mom is, was a third order Franciscan. Is that the same yes. one? I don't know about so regular. So it's or... how it started. Exactly. Mm. So it started as lay individuals um, uh, with uh, I I don't want to say the OFMs, the Order of Friar Miners, but it might have been they wanted to start um, uh, lay individuals uh, devoting their lives and taking their lives, their call uh, in in the mode of, of St. Francis. And then then they wanted to start becoming priests. And out of that, you know, decades and, and centuries. Praise God. Through, I mean, praise God the, for Franciscan. I've, yeah. I've been pursuing my master's degree there, although I'm very, very slowly. Got so much on my <laughs> plate. Good for you, though. But I love, I love Franciscan University. We're talking with John Heinen. He's a beautiful Catholic. He loves his Lord. He loves the church. He loves his family. We're going to dig deeper into his personal walk with the Lord. And uh, he said he was going to actually uh, confess his mortal sins to us today later on. So. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, no, we're talking with John Heinen. This is the bear <laughs> He doesn't have any. So 
That's anyway, right. this, this no, is the bear walk. Went to confession on Sunday. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, once we were doing a we were doing a recording of a retreat, and we had the men had a chance to go to confession. One of the men left his microphone on when he went into the confessional, the tent. And when he came out, we told him we had had it all recorded, and he would just he uh, blasphemed right there, uh, even though we hadn't recorded. He had to go back and go to confession. Okay, this is the Bear Watson Convention. We'll be right back. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Men, yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite everyone to go to our website, deepadventure.com. The biggest problem is... John Heinen is on the show with us. He's our social media, uh, one of our social media contacts at Fuzadi who helps us with all of that. He says you got too much on your website. People don't even know what to do. You got so much going on there. And it's true. If you haven't been to our website lately, you're really missing out. Go visit us at deepadventure.com. Become a part of our outreach. We'd love to have you join us. We're talking with uh, John Heinen, who is a professional trumpet player. Uh, we're not going to hold against him that he went to TCU. Which is the arch rival of Baylor, and he's a and he's a father. But I want to talk to you a little bit about your time, John. When you were in college, I, I remember yeah. for me, I had my deep conversion experience when I was in college, and I felt bad for anybody looking back. Anybody that was sitting in the mm -hmm. school cafeteria alone, I was going to sit with them. And I just, oh, I mean, even though it was a Baptist yeah. university, a lot of the people there weren't didn't have a personal rel relationship with Jesus. And I had just experienced the great infusion of the Holy Spirit through the Catholic charismatic renewal. Yeah. And I thought, if 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 anybody in the world knew that they could experience Jesus Christ yeah. and the power of the Holy Spirit, the creator of the universe, you could actually get to get on the other side of the sky and the, and, and get to know him and experience him, they would want to know. I mean, I just assumed Amen. that. Mm -hmm. And so they would sit down with me, and I, it, it wasn't so much that I was an apologist, not at all. I was a witness. I, I yeah. just was over overflowing with, you got to meet Jesus, you know? And you were in college, and you would have the experience, because um, the Holy Spirit affects everybody in different ways. You were being challenged at an at a, at apologetical level. And so you yeah. had to grab your books and start studying. The reason why I That's know right. so much about the, the reasons for the existence of God is my best friend here on the island is an evangelistic atheist. And so mm -hmm. he cha because of his challenge, I had to start reading Peter Craft and all those other great yeah. uh, writings. Scott Hahn has a book out on and others. But I would like to you, before we go to the next subject, what were the two or three main things that they challenged you on about your Catholic faith that you, uh, that you had to have dialogue with them about, that you got to Absolutely. have dialogue with them about? Yeah, the first one was confession, and and it's different roads for everyone, and, and I wouldn't have expected that confession would have been the one, but it was. I used to go to confession uh, almost yeah, once a month, once every other month, uh, and my undergrad, and then I used to go weekly in my, my master's degree. Did you send um, more? You send more? Did you send more? <laughs> I fell in love with confession. My, oh, my passion God. for confession just grew, and... Um, yeah, I get I, stories there. But, well, no, um, I want to hear. I want to. I want to hear a story about that. That I hear so many people say that their walk with the Lord got deeper because, or their conversion was in a confessional. It's right, absolutely. And I messed up. I met the best man in my wedding, who was the best man in my wedding, in the confessional line um, at St. Mary's in New Haven, Connecticut. So, oh, really? Um, oh, yeah. You went to Yale too. Yeah. Didn't you? Did you ever, go to, right. you ever go to that pizza? That the original pizza place in the United States is there, right? Uh, 
I did, yes. And and what's it called? What's lunch, that? which is oh, uh, yeah. so there's Pepe's and Pepe's. there's Frank Pepe's and yeah, Pepe's uh, a pizza and there's uh, Louis Lunch, which is claims the original hamburger ever made. So somewhere uh, it's, between it's, pizzas, though, you met. Uh, your best man in line at a confessional. Right. Why, what was drawing I you? Did. What was drawing you to confession? Um, yeah, so I was always drawn to confession because of the the of the psychological release, the joy, the joy that I experienced within uh, going to confession. And I did. I had grown. I mean, it wasn't like this in my youth and my undergrad. And when I was at master's, I was living by myself. I, I had a great experience at Yale, but it is it is secular through and through. Uh, uh, atheism, uh, rampant and, and militistic, you know, mili um, military, Mili you know what militant <laughs> and yeah militant atheism thank you that's exactly right and i was just being attacked by atheists and just the, the sheer thought that i would believe in god and that got my emotions all worked up on a regular basis and so i would i would run to uh daily mass and so i go to daily mass and i was very blessed the dominicans there at saint mary's in new haven uh, amazing men amazing orthodox men uh father hubens and dyer father usenza you know these guys helped me so much. And so I'm going to mass and then confession was always offered before and after every mass. I, you know, the thing so. is, the thing about that is I've seen, it, it shows your determination to get past whatever that was that you were, that you were failing and the fact that you were going monthly and then you started going weekly. And I'll tell you, John, there was a time in my life, uh, can we have daily confessions here or uh, at St. Yeah. Augustine's, at least we did. Yeah. And, uh, and I, there was one person that was just provoking me like crazy, and I would just bite my tongue and mm -hmm. bite my tongue. But I still had a lot of anger, right? I would go to confession. Yes. Every day. I would go to confession every single day, and I know so many men. I think of Eric Wardrum, the great. He's just a great man. He's he was in prison, and uh, and uh, he had the exp and he started the Catholic Crossbearers Motorcycle Ministry. I love this man. Tough, gritty, tough, tough, tough man. Yeah. And he was in prison for uh, for killing a man, and it was it was through going through wow. confession. The priest said, "So what have you done?" He goes, "Every all of them, every all of the Ten Commandments, yeah. all of them." Uh, but that moment of confession was a moment of incredible conversion, you know. And oh, it's part of our that? Catholic faith, isn't it? That that you, you, there's no one that knows Jesus that didn't meet him. They might have had some some people are having conversion experiences through a dream or something, I guess, in the Muslim world. But eventually yeah. they they find their roots by connecting with another Christian. There has to be that person-to-person yeah. person experience. And when the priest is there in person, Absolutely. But t t tell me now, Amen. some more about the apostles. So you were going to confession, and this was a big problem for your your Protestant friends that you went to, went to uh, That's confession. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, uh, and it was a lot of Protestant. It was a lot of Reformed Calvinists um, there at TCU. Um, and... Uh, so they, you know, they had their pillars of belief and the idea of, of confessing your sins, not, uh, you know, not in your room, you know, in prayer, uh, but actually to, you know, a man in persona Christi, the priest, um, is was so foreign to them that they thought I was crazy. Um, and honestly, you know, through apologetics, I would go through scripture, right? Because that's the common ground that we could have, not with the atheist at Yale. That was a totally different ball game. But right. uh, with with my Protestant um, brothers, who um, many are still my close friends, uh, it was a lot of going to scripture. And when they couldn't respond to scripture and, and the, you know, uh, the importance of confession, they were just, uh, they would leave and they would, they would lose. And I was do you, do you like have this. one example or two examples of that, those scriptures? Are those still uh, close um, to you? I know it's been a while, so. Yeah, it has been a while, but no, I mean, I would argue, um, I would argue the, uh, you know, well, uh, binding, binding in heaven and loosing on Yeah, right. exactly. So, uh, you know, when Christ uh, had, had, you know, risen and, uh, and went to the apostles, you know, and told them that who sins you, um, Retainer, your binder um, bound on earth, and those sins who loose, you know, are loosed. And Isn't heaven, that amazing? And Isn't that amazing? It, and right after, right, right after he he raised, he was raised, you know, right after mm -hmm. his resurrection. That's one of the first things he did, and that was powerful. But actually, getting you, you bring up a great point. Getting Protestants to um, our Protestants brothers and sisters uh, to to see Scripture in the same way. Scott Hahn has actually done a, a couple of really great talks on this. You know, uh, the way that we do um, is um, 
just opens the mind. And the fact that when I was talking to uh, my Protestant friends and saying, okay, so when, when Christ came, he breathed life into them. After he rose from the dead, he breathed life into them. Where else in scripture did God ever breathe life into anybody? And they couldn't answer. They oh, couldn't really? answer. Zo- and, Genesis. Yeah, and we, you know, <laughs> of course, we go to Genesis. And, Zoe. We, and just that that little thing, they were like, well, what? Well, how is that important? I'm like, this is, you believe this is the word of God? And they were like, yeah. And I'm like, then all of it is important. And when they kind of came around to that, um, it was, it opened the door. And I would say, and I just like to end with this when it comes to that, is that God blessed me with that TOR, that priest who became my spiritual director. May he rest in peace. Mm. Um, he was an amazing man, died when he was 86. Uh, Father Theodore Bradauer, um, love him, uh, pray, uh, pray for him and pray to him uh, on a regular basis. And he taught me how to love. Uh, mm. That is what the apologetics uh, didn't. Um, he got you past the apologetics into the heart side. Amen. It's There's exactly a, you can teach what he knowledge. Did. You can need, teach knowledge, or you can teach love. That's right. You know, and, and, and he, or you can do both. But it yeah, has to start. It has to start from love. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. Charity and truth. And uh, it was because of him and my frequent. I, I was with him for three years. He was my spiritual director. And it was, um, I didn't even know what a spiritual director was, by the way, in college. I just was in confession with him. And I said, you just said a great book. I can't remember it. Can I see you outside of confession so you can kind of help me through this stuff? And he was like, yeah, absolutely. And I'm what, I mean, unbeknownst to me, but God's grace uh, and his providence uh, led me to, uh, to him as a spiritual director. And well, you know, he was so- all about love. And, and, and so, John, you know, we got so much more we want to talk about. We're going to take a break here in a I few do. moments. But you played yeah. the trumpet. Let's talk, I want to talk about your trumpet playing. I want to talk about your, your wife and, and, you've, and the challenges you've had uh, yeah, in, yeah. In, uh, with, you know, you've had children, you've lost children through miscarriages and things like that. And yeah. how you as a, as a leader in your household, how, how, how you were ho- helping to hold your whole family together. But uh, the, yeah. the trumpet playing at the Olympics, what was that like? What Olympics yeah, was it? it was Beijing, for, uh, right? Uh, Beijing 2008. Yep, Beijing 2008. So it was what they called the Cultural Olympiad um, for full listeners. Uh, basically, evening performances for people who were going to the Olympics. Did you ever so get to I play was, that one song? The, I don't know how to do it, but that one song that they opened the Olympics we, with? We do a lot of Olympic fanfares. Yeah. Yeah. We played a lot of Olympic themes. So, but I had had a great opportunity over there. I think. I mentioned to you, I know I mentioned to you that I got uh, a bug bite while I was over there and it gave me a brain virus, put me into a coma. But my time in Beijing was fun. I had a great time at the Great Wall and well, we'll, playing. When we come there. back, we'll talk about that. You, you actually went into a coma when you got back yeah. from the Olympics. You had a brain virus. That's right. I've never even heard of such a thing. This is Bear Wozniak. We're talking with my friend John Hine, and He does, he and uh, the, the people at Fusati do, do our social media, and we're so grateful. Uh, for what they do, because we're trying to communicate and get the word, the good, the gospel out to people, and they do such a good job of helping us to accomplish that. We want to invite you to go to the YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak, and subscribe, because you may be listening to this on a podcast or on EW, EWTN Radio, but if you go to our YouTube channel and press the subscribe button and ring that little bell, you'll be notified whenever we post these, and we post them before they air on the podcast in the, in the EWTN. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. 
we would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today, we have a, a young man that I've really uh, grown fond of and have a lot of uh, respect for, John Heinen. He's uh, with Fuzadi. They help us with, all, with our, all of our social media outreach. But I've just been able to observe him over the time that I've known him go through some real challenges in his life yeah. uh, with, with medical issues with one of their children and with a pregnancy. And I begin to I begin to realize this is just really a man of faith. So I I, I tell people we have the best show in, in the universe because we have the best guests. So we're glad to have you you with us, John. Aloha. Man, yeah, glad to be here. So excited. So tell us a little bit. Then you came back from the Beijing Olympics, and yeah. uh, you, did when did you when did you begin to feel ill? Yeah. So it was about uh, it takes ten days or so for what's called a uh, encephalitis or brain virus to affect your brain. And so it was. I was back in the states. Praise God for about a week and a half. And then I started just getting common cold sickness and feelings and went to the um, went to the doctor's office a few times. And they just kept on saying, oh, you're fine. Just take vitamin C, you know, get plenty of rest. And I lived in a one bedroom studio apartment. And when I, uh, well, Friday, I went into a coma and it was Monday. Well, who found you? Yeah, it was actually the security guard at the Catholic Community Center, who was not Catholic, but became a close friend of mine. Um, the security guard, uh, my, uh, it's a longer story, but basically uh, he was connected by my parents who couldn't uh, get a hold of me. And so he went and had the landlord open the door and found me on the couch, apparently out. And wow. he brought me to the hospital and it was, uh, praise you God. You were yeah, in a coma two, when he brought you to the hospital? Yeah, two and a half days. And um, I was living by myself and my parents were just checking on me and they knew I was feeling sick and everything. So they were checking on me, praise God. And so I was out for, yeah, over two and a half days and then uh, went into the hospital. The only person in the Western world with my documented case of this brain virus, nobody, they have no documentation in, in the Western world um world of of the encephalitis that i had which gave me lesions and blood clusters on the front left lobe of my brain bear you know guys i was like man chicks dig scars and i'm like i need to get like a picture of my brain because i've got all these lesions and blood clusters <laughs> on the front left lobe uh, of I my brain so, what, i don't <laughs> think that's what they're looking for <laughs> and, and fortunately i didn't have that or else maybe i wouldn't be married so uh. um but um, yeah, so that was uh, a brief experience. Uh, the doctors there uh, fed me basically intravenously and and gave me tons of antibiotics. And, well, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm think, thinking uh, it, it makes you feel vulnerable, right? Because you're a young man and you're like, I'm strong and vibrant. And all of a sudden, you realize, wait a minute, I'm not. I've been taking all this for granted. That's right. Yeah, hospital for 12 days. I mean, it was um, uh, it was shocking. I would. I was, uh, again, very blessed with the people around me, you know, and uh, I was living in New Haven and my family's in Texas. So I woke up Tuesday morning. I'll, I won't ever forget. I woke up Tuesday morning in the Nero ICU there at Yale New Haven Hospital. My parents were wearing masks in front of and me. And you're like, dude, what's going uh, on? I, you cracked. didn't know if you had woken up yet. <laughs> it's like, this is a That's bad dream. That's right. I was shocked. So, um, but God led me through that too. And my, my prayer life and my spiritual life was... Um, was real strong or at least growing in that. Well, strength, I find so. like, I, I mean, I got to tell you, I just went through uh, uh, prostate cancer radiation. You're one yeah. of the few people that know that I found myself yeah. beginning to talk about it more publicly now, but I went mm. from being this really powerful, strong guy to like, 
like my poor wife, what I put her through, going through the radiation. Yeah. But I want to tell you, when I went through that season, my prayer life really suffered. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I really had to, I, I, I mean, I had only maybe a, 10 people knew that I was going through that. Yeah. Uh, but I relied on their prayer. It was their prayers during that season because yeah. I could just, I mean, I could, I wanted to say I'm suffering for you, Jesus, and I kind of did, but but uh, it was it was other people's prayers that carried me through. But now tell tell mm-hmm. us this, and, and I so I want to thank uh, thank the Lord for healing me. I'm in Hawaii. I'm getting. I've, I've only. Yeah. I'm in my fourth month of recovery now, and I'm. Uh, God. I'm battling to get back into physical shape. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm That's adding a, battle, a lot. Yeah. I'm adding a lot of weight because I lost so much muscle. So I'm getting my mm, muscle back for sure. But I wanted to ask you, um, and we are running out of time. We got about eight minutes left. Yeah. Your your wife and, and and your children and I know you've had some miscarriages. I've experienced yeah. that, and I love how when you share how how many children you have, yeah. how well, how is it that you share that? You, yeah, what, so what I I always say I have nine kids. I have five with me and four already entrusted to the infinite love and mercy of God. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so you my have wife nine I, children. It's so beautiful to right. say it there. I have I have six children, two that two are two that are in heaven. Yeah, because of the miscarriage. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it was, and you brought up the father unit and, you know, we live in a fatherless society and, and mm. we're, you know, and Satan is attacking the father so much. And I do, I love talking about this because, um, you know, I've got good friends like Devin Shaw, you know, you've met him, um, with his uh, father ministry and everything, yes. St. Joseph, father of St. Joseph. And, and he's, you know, we've had great conversations together about this and how Satan's attacking, um, the, the father, you know, is it because he can break down the family unit. And to what you're saying, though, with all the miscarriages I had, um, it was it was hard. It was really hard. And to the point where um, on the fourth child that we lost, I was growing real numb. Had you had, had you a, had had you had a child uh, come full term yet be born? So we had two miscarriages and then we had. Gemma, who's with us, who's my first um, uh, born daughter. And she is with us, uh, Gemma Catherine Heinen. And then we had two more miscarriages. And, you know, it was kind of, uh, she's, I mean, they're all miracles, but it was um, uh, amazing to have Gemma. But then every time we got pregnant, we were super excited. And uh, then when we lost them, I got numb. It was, mm. um, you know, I definitely got numb. And your was, wife, was how was your wife darkness. and all that? Yeah, she, yeah, it was hard. It was very hard. A lot of, a lot of depression and a lot of anxiety. And um, so it was others' prayers. I like what you said. It was others' prayers that were helping us. I was begging other people for praying to mm. pray for us because I felt the darkness and, and kind of the, you know, just screw it all sort of uh, mentality right you know that was that was overwhelming me and um you had two miscarriages and, th- and then the baby and then two more and then two more that's right and, and then um and i'd like to say this too it's really important if you don't know about napro technology um you know it we need men need to know about this ladies need to know about this we know devout catholics that have never heard about it but napro technology is natural procreative technology they're in omaha nebraska um uh, with dr hilgers and they're actually wonderful it was there. wonderful and what, what happened you they went you went to them and they helped you with yeah so we went to them and it wasn't hard but basically through um through uh charting my wife's cycle we were able to uh determine what was causing our miscarriages they were wow. able to give us yeah they were able to give us some supplements some natural supplements and boom 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 now we've got four more uh little ones uh my oldest Gemma is eight and so i've got five uh eight and under and are my most recent one the one that you've experienced with me bear joseph michael heinen my my little baby he's three months old and uh and it was a crisis pregnancy with him too because my wife contracted a virus in utero and so oh. he was wasn't growing he wasn't growing and so um How old is he now? Four, hearing... four months old now or i uh, just over three months yeah exactly through just a couple weeks over three months how, yeah, so how's, coming joseph, up on four months. how's joseph doing right he's doing great he cries all the time no but he's he's really good and did uh, i just hear him growing. cry in the distance you probably did oh, that's yes, a beautiful I sound. <laughs> you know we my wife and i usually go to early mass but she likes to go to the the mid-morning masses because she likes to hear the babies yeah. cry she loves that yeah just, isn't that interesting yeah. yeah oh praise god yeah, yeah. That's beautiful, and it's great that they're that they are there. I mean, it's exactly where we need to be, you know. 
I love, um, my wife and I got, because this whole coronavirus got put in the front row of um, church one weekend. And uh, <laughs> we were both like, everybody can see us. And, but the kids did great. And, and I, we go to a church that everybody has, you know, two to 10 kids. So <laughs> we go to a church with a lot of huge families. So it's, it, you know, no one's judging. It was, it's a great church. That's just um, so cool. Of, I don't yeah. like the front row. Cause like, I know when to kneel and stand and everything, but when I'm in the front row, I can't remember it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, it all goes, just out, goes the out the window. It's that's so right. funny. There used to be this TV show called To Tell the Truth. I don't know if you don't remember it. Was, it was, you can see the old, I watched it the other day, the 40-year-old okay. show where they'd, they'd yeah. lie about who, what they did and what, who they are. And then they'd say, okay, yeah. well, the real so-and-so, please stand up. And you see them kind of stand and then sit and then stand and then kind of get up. That's the Catholic Church. A lot <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, because here in Hawaii, we don't stand at the same time as we do on the mainland. It changes. There's a slight oh, change. So you'll see people sure. kind of getting up and halfway down. And they're kind of like they're doing their, their CrossFit training right there at Mass. You know, we've been talking with, <laughs> with John Heinen. He's someone that I've really grown to respect. He's uh, the, the, per, one of the people, main people at Fuzadi that helps us with our social media outreach. So if you're getting uh, finding us on Facebook or if you're finding us with our emails, uh, that's that's John is behind all that. But uh, I have him on my show because I've really grown to admire him. And so thank you for being our guest, Jan, uh, John, on the Deep Adventure, Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thanks for having me, Bear. Thanks for all that you're doing. It, it, you're, you're a blessing to uh, the church and to uh, men's ministry and um, our ministry to men. And um, just I'm so thankful for our friendship. So. We want to give a shout out to everybody. Please pray for us. Please pray for us uh, that God's will would be done and that our personal relationship with Jesus would go deeper so that we can really hear his voice and, and do his will. Thanks to everybody. Till, till next time, uh, go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter because we got a new present for you. If you subscribe, you get uh, the free audio book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, uh, my, my latest book. But until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Aloha. That's right. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.